Namaste, welcome. This is Manduka's Fall Equinox Yoga Ritual Flow. My name is Ashley Turner, and we're gonna start with a very simple ritual. Um, anytime we are approaching one of the quarter holidays, the two equinox, the fall and the spring equinox, it's really a time to turn inward. So for the fall equinox, we approach this um, threshold, and it's really a crossroads of the year where we honor this turning of the wheel, of turning into the autumn season, um, the fall season. So I invite you to bring into your practice any item that feels um, symbolic or special for you. I have a couple things here that I really love to always incorporate in a ritual. And ritual is just simply a way of creating a sacred space and setting an intention for yourself. So it's really saying a prayer for yourself and calling on whatever it is that you wanna create in the next phase of your life, in the next phase, and the next season of the year. So I always start by saging. You can get a little sage or a little incense and just clear your space, um, clear your own energetic field, clear the space around you. It really helps to ground as well. So sage also represents the air element. Incense represents the air element, the smoke itself. So just take a deep breath and connect to that grounding cord, that linchpin, just clearing away whatever's already come through this year and bringing yourself right here, right now. The second thing I love to incorporate is essential oils. And so this is just very simply lavender oil, which is one of the most balancing, harmonizing, and calming oils for the nervous system. So you just take a couple drops and you can rub it in your palms. You always wanna make sure to use um, therapeutic grade organic essential oils. You do what's called cupping, cup your palms together, take a couple deep breaths. So it goes right into the amygdala gland in the brain. Again, it helps to balance the nervous system and really calm, especially the mind, and uplift our moods. So you can rub the oil anywhere you want, soles of the feet, the neck, the wrists, always a good place. And just helps you to shift the mood. And then finally, if you want, you can take a meaningful object and just place it in your palms. We're gonna set our intention. So I have here a very simple amethyst crystal. And you can just place a stone or anything or nothing. You can just place your palms together at your heart. And then take a moment, close your eyes, draw the shoulders down the back, and just sit in a relaxed, poised position. So prayer is just very simply connecting to your own heart space, the innermost sanctum of your heart, which is called Hridaya. And the Hridaya is the spiritual heart. So just close your eyes and maybe with a stone or crystal in your palms or maybe just the palms together, take a moment to drop into what you really need in your life right now. What are you really asking for? Maybe it's an image or a vision. What are you creating in this next phase of your life? Maybe it's just deep gratitude, something that you're really thankful for. And just take a moment to set your intention or your sankalpa. At this time of our life, at the fall equinox, we really assess our harvest, all of the rewards and abundance that has come our way, things that have come to fruition. And we also take a moment to acknowledge our disappointments and maybe losses. So just take a moment to drop in and simply connect to what is at this moment in your life. Relaxing into exactly what is. A couple deep breaths right into the back of the heart center. And we'll take three sounds of OM together, inhaling.
from prayer position, just simply keep the pinky finger and thumb together, heels of the hands together, peel the other three middle fingers away from each other. So it's called Lotus Mudra, Padma Mudra. It's also known as Chalice Mudra when you hold it above the crown of the head. Just an open and receptive mudra. Again, receiving whatever life is bringing you and trusting the great mystery. It's incredible, incredible, mysterious flow of life. And we just offer ourselves into that great river of prana. And release the hands very slowly. Come into child's pose on your mat. And separate the knees a little bit wider. Let the belly drop down between the thighs. Extend the arms forward. And again, you can take prayer position, full pranam bowing to your own intention, this vision, this image of what it is that you really want to manifest in the next few months of your life. Or you can turn the palms straight down to the floor, spreading the fingers really wide, just extending the arms right out of the shoulders, reach down through the hips and out through the toes, spreading all 10 toes. And place your attention on the breath. Inhaling, completely filling the back of the lungs. And as you exhale, soften into the earth even more. Let the forehead drop down, top of the feet press down. And one more inhale, filling the back of the lungs completely. And soften as you exhale. When we keep our attention on the breath like this, we start to train the nervous system to slow down and smooth out. Now separate the palms, spread the fingers really wide. Feel a little claw action through the hands, like a tiger paw pressing through the base knuckle of each finger. And reach so strongly through the arms that the elbow and forearm comes off the floor, biceps and triceps hugging the bones. Feel the shoulder blades carving down the back. And very slowly on an inhale, rise. Tuck the toes, knees are right under the hips. A simple cat-cow belly drops down, inhale, coil the chest, open, inner palm pressing, point the toes, exhale, round. And just keep this going at your own pace, warming up the spine, starting to flush prana up and down both sides of the spine, the right and the left, and the Ida Pingala Nadhis. Again, the mouth is closed. Tongue is to the roof of the mouth, right behind the front teeth. You feel a slight constriction through the base of the throat and actually hear the sound of the breath as you're inhaling and exhaling. Sound of the breath pulling over the back of the throat. So we're gonna move on. Exhale, round, point the toes, tuck the tail, tuck the chin, inhale. Coil the chest, open, pause here, shoulders away from the ears. And now melt the heart right between the hands. And so the nipples are right between the thumbs, roll the shoulder blades down the back, heart melts down, chin to the floor. Stretch across the base of the throat and lift to the pit of the belly. This is a little opening for the upper back. Take one more breath here. And push up to the hands and the knees as you inhale. Point the toes, child's pose, exhale, reach back. Inhale, rise to the hands and the knees. And downward facing dog, exhale, pause here. You can spiral the triceps under, lift through the pit of the belly, heels melt down. We're gonna take that flow just a couple more times to warm up the spine and start to bring balance to the right and left hemispheres as well as balancing out the nervous system. The spinal column is like the super highway of the nervous system. You can drop the knees down to the floor, toes are tucked, come onto the hands and the knees, inhale. Coil the chest open, exhale, chest and chin to the floor. Push back up to the hands and knees, inhale. Point the toes, child's pose, exhale. Inhale, rise to the hands and knees. Downward facing dog, exhale, just moving at your own pace. Inhale, hips lift up and back. Exhale, drop the knees down. Toes are tucked under, inhale, chest coils open, triceps underneath. Exhale, chest and chin to the floor. Inhale, push up to the hands and knees. Point the toes, child's pose, exhale. Inhale, rise, downward facing dog. Exhale, press it back, one more round. 
Take an inhale, push into the palms, lift through the pit of the belly. Exhale, drop the knees down. Toes are tucked, inhale, straight up the spine, Archie. Exhale, chest and chin to the floor. Inhale, up to the hands and knees. Child's pose, exhale, press it back. Inhale, rise to the hands and knees and then downward facing dog. Exhale, pause here. Again, find your tiger pause. Pushing through the base knuckle of each finger. And come way up onto the balls of the feet, lift the heels. Then bend the knees quite a lot. Press the chest towards the thighs so the ribs press back towards the thighs. Empty the heart. And hear the sound of your breath. So you're really reaching. The inner thighs are spinning behind you. The chest is melting. Shoulder blades are moving into the upper back. Start to release and open up the thoracic spine right between the shoulder blades under the armpits. And I reach the tail and sit bones a little higher and straightening the legs, downward facing dog. Step the feet a little closer. Inhale, right leg extends, spread the toes. Exhale, step the right foot through, drop the back knee down, keep the back toes tucked under. So you're gonna inhale, reach the arms up and just circle them around three times. It's like you're doing a giant backstroke. Pinky finger goes in first. So opening up the shoulders, upper back, last breath. And then hands to the floor, push off the front of the right foot, inhale, heart forward. Exhale, standing splits, fold. Take one inhale, reach the left leg, roll the left ankle around. Exhale, left foot down next to the right. And inhale, halfway up. Fold forward, exhale. Now bend the knees, squat down. Hook the thumbs and then inhale, push through the heels like a little sprout. You're curling up one vertebrae at a time. Optional, you can arch back, straighten the legs. Hands to the heart, exhale. So we're gonna take this version of Suri Namaskar. It's a classic version of Suri Namaskar. Hook the opposite thumb. Inhale, reach it up and back. Dive forward. Exhale, chest to thighs. Interlace fingers behind the back, then straighten the legs to your own degree. Hands down, inhale, halfway up. Now the right foot steps back, right knee down to the floor. Keep the back toes tucked under. Hook the thumbs. Three big circles all the way around. It's like you're doing a backstroke. Pinky finger goes in first. So again, we're really focusing on pacifying vata, the air element. We want to balance it out. Hands down. Good, downward facing dog, step back. And take an inhale, upper push up position. We're putting it all together. You're gonna drop the knees to the floor, chest and chin to the floor. Good, now roll through, plant the toes. Drag the ribs forward, low cobra, elbows in. Downward facing dog, exhale. Inhale, right leg extends, reach it up. And completing the side, exhale, step through, back knee down. One breath, one movement. Inhale, hook the thumbs, reach up. Exhale, reverse the hands. Push off the front foot, inhale, heart forward. Exhale, fold. Left leg extends on your inhale. Exhale, left foot down to meet the right. Inhale, halfway up. Fold forward, exhale. Bend the knees, squat down, hook the thumbs. Inhale, push through the heels to straighten the legs. Optional arch back, hands to the heart, exhale. So now the left leg leads. Opposite thumb hooks, inhale, chest to thighs, exhale. Interlace fingers, then straighten the legs to your own degree. Hands down, inhale, halfway up. Left foot steps back, left knee down. Hook the opposite thumb, inhale, circle it up and back. Reverse the hands, downward facing dog. Exhale, plank position, inhale. Knees, chest, and chin to the floor. Exhale, roll through, cobra, and some of you into upward facing dog. Exhale, 
down dog. Left leg extends, inhale. Exhale, step through, back knee down. Hook the thumbs, inhale, circle the arms up and back. And push off the front foot. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, fold. As you reach the right leg, spread the toes, roll the ankle around. Exhale, right foot down next to left. Halfway up, inhale. Fold forward, exhale. Bend the knees, squat down, hook the thumbs. Inhale, reach it up and back. And hands to the heart, pause here, close the eyes. Take a moment, just notice what a few minutes of sun salutation and a little bit of activating poses can do. Feel the shoulders drop, the forehead soften. And come back to your own sankalpa, your vision, your image, your intention, and your prayer. Bring the hands to the hips. Separate the feet wide out to the side. So you want the feet about as wide as your wrists. Go ahead and lift the right toes, turn the right leg out. Take an inhale, feet hug towards each other. Exhale, bend the right knee 90 degrees, warrior two. Reaching back just as much with the left arm and left side. You can gaze on one point. Empty the shoulders, see if you can sit down a little lower. Lower belly drawing in. So place your attention on the quality of your breath. Again, the season of fall is a season of vata energy. It's the air and space element which can easily get deranged or imbalanced. So standing poses, restorative poses, and really connecting to the feet, connecting to the earth itself helps to balance us. It helps us to really ground in the nervous system. Take another breath here. Go to reach out. You can bring left forearm to the thigh, left elbow to the inside of the knee or the left fingertips to the floor. Parjwal Kanasana, left arm out over the left ear. It's a 45 degree angle. Really use that right shoulder to pry the right knee open. And keeping your gaze on one point. So fall for most of us is also a time of great productivity. We're back at school, we're back at work, out of the summer season. So really focusing on what it is that we wanna create in our lives. So as you take these poses, keeping the gaze on one point, keep bringing your intention back into the front of your mind, focusing on the image, the vision of what you personally want to create and dream big. Look down at the floor. Inhale, rise back to warrior two and straighten the front leg. Come onto the right heel, turn the whole right leg and toes in. Come onto the left heel, whole left leg turns out. Take an inhale. Soles of the feet pulling prana up from the earth. Exhale, warrior two. So the air element in Ayurveda is called pavan in Sanskrit, and it's governed by our vayus, or the winds, and the way that prana moves through our body. So while you're in warrior two, can you feel from your center expanding and radiating outward in every direction? And can you also feel from your periphery hugging into the midline, everything collecting, that's samana vayu, that coalescence. Two more breaths. So yoga practice helps us to become more skillful in our lives so that we direct the flow of our attention and energy and we take action that's directly aligned with our dreams. Take a last inhale. And Parjva Konasana, elbow to thigh or inside of the knee or the fingertips to the floor, right arm extends. Gaze on one point, bring your vision, your image back into your mind's eye. And come back to the quality of your breath. And look down at the floor. Inhale, rise. Exhale, straighten the front leg. Turn the left foot in. You can bring the feet just a little closer if you want. Inhale, reach. 
Exhale, reverse namaste, hands in prayer position behind the back. If it's too much, you can interlace the fingers. Take an inhale, thighs lifting, really burrow down through the feet. Exhale, fold forward. Again, the gaze is on one point. And come back to your breath. And come back to your breath, shift the weight to the front edge of the heels. See if you can use the lower belly to pull the crown of the head even closer to the floor. And release the hands. Bring the hands to the floor right under the shoulders. Take an inhale, lift the chest. So come down onto the hands and the knees. And we're going to take frog pose, which is actually called Mandukasana, which is what Manduka is named after, the frog. It's the logo. Separate the knees as wide as possible and bring the feet a little wider. It's one of my favorite poses. Come down onto the forearms if it's available to you. And you're going to scoop the tail under and then gently press the hips back towards the heels. And we're gonna come into this progressively. So on the inhale, slide forward a little, scoop the tail under, exhale, press the hips back. And then two more, inhale, roll forward. There's a massaging into the hip sockets, exhale, pressing back. And one more, inhale, shift forward slightly. Scooping the tail under, exhale, press the hips back. And release the head and neck and just close the eyes. Feel right into the point of origin of sensation. So can you actually feel the head of the femur bone externally rotating and all of that connective tissue through the hips softening, being massaged open here? Mandukasana. It's one of the most therapeutic poses because we just tend to carry so much tension in the hips and the pelvis, the lower back. It's the largest joint in the body, surrounded by the largest muscle tissue, so one of the greatest storehouses of stress and tension and just compression. Last two deep breaths. And slowly come to the hands and the knees. I'm going to bring the knees together very gingerly. Probably feel a lot of sensation here. And turn back to the front of your mat and we'll take the exact opposite stretch. So you're going to bring the knees together. Separate the feet a little wider than your hips and walk back. You can either <clears throat> drop down between the heels or just grab a block and place it right between the ankles and sit on the block. Either way, you want to have the heels like clamping in, hugging into the outer hips, and then spreading all 10 toes. As some of you might come down onto your forearms. Again, this is a very grounding pose, so great pose to balance out vata energy. And pause here for about five breaths, setting your gaze on one point. So some very practical lifestyle tools that you can use in the fall season to begin to harmonize. Again, it's the time where the air element and the cold start to kick up. So some of the best ways to balance the nervous system, just obviously to stay warm, so dress in layers. And you also can start adding more warm spices, warmer spices to your food. So spices like cinnamon, nutmeg, cardamom are really good to boost up the digestive system and the nervous system and just keep your immune system um, stronger to keep that fire and that heat going. So take a last couple of breaths here. Another great practice is just to insert mini breaks into your day. So maybe at lunchtime you can do a mini meditation or take a mini nap. Um, just five minutes can really bring you back to center and build this coalescence 
life pulls us in all these directions and our mind can get very contradictory and neurotic. And so we use all of these different practices of yoga and Ayurveda, meditation, pranayam, just to help us truly stay in our power. And slowly begin to transition out of virasana. Come to lying all the way flat on your stomach. So we'll just let the knees breathe here. Tuck the toes, walk the legs back a little further behind you. Now bring the legs together, top of the feet press, big toes together, arms behind you, palms face down. Roll the head of the shoulders back, squeezing shoulder blades together, lift the chest as much as possible. Really push down through the hands and the feet. Push through the feet so much that the thighs and kneecaps lift. Last breath here. So practicing this art of equanimity for the equinox. And lift the chest a little higher, interlace fingers in full shalambhasana, roll the head of the shoulders back. Try to squeeze the fist together, heels of the hands together, even if you need to bend the elbows. Feet on the floor for the first two breaths, head and neck relaxed. Now inhale, lift the legs, spread the toes. Last two breaths. Squeezing out the adrenals and the kidneys, stress hormones. One more inhale and exhale, release. Turn the head to one side and just close the eyes. Bend the knees in the air, just let the feet windshield wiper side to side. And place the hands under the shoulders, press up to the hands and the knees. And cross the ankles, sit back over the heels. And bring the right leg forward, left foot to the inner thigh, and Janu Shirshasana. Fingertips outside of the right leg. Take an inhale, lift from the pit of the belly. Exhale, fold over right leg. And some of you, if you can stretch a little further, you can bring a block outside of that foot to get a little bit longer, more thorough stretch. If you find yourself really lifted high, you can also bring the forehead to the block, which would just give you a little support here. And just a great reminder that we're always supported. There's always help around if we just pause to ask for help and humble ourselves and seek guidance and support from our friends, from our mentors and our loved ones, from all these practices. These practices serve to fortify and strengthen our vessel. Last breath. And slowly rise. Let's take a moment, pause, release left leg, just pause in the center, observe the difference between the right and the left hemispheres. And right foot comes in, left leg extends. Optional, use the block as a pillow or outside of the left foot. Fold forward. And close the eyes. Five full deep breaths, just simply being with what is, being present with what is. Again, fall in many ways symbolizes change, the winds of change are upon us, the change of the seasons, the change of the leaves falling, the turning of the wheel. And as a yogin or a yogini, one of our greatest endeavors is to become very skillful and elegant in the face of change. And change is always upon us. It's the great, consistent, inevitable, constant in our lives. It's change. And slowly rise. 
Extend the right leg, Paschimottanasana, draw the flesh of the buttocks out from behind. And inhale, extend through the heart. Exhale, fold. slowly rise and then bend the knees plant the feet on the floor and just roll down onto your back separate the feet about as wide as your yoga mat and let the knees fall in towards each other so just a moment to let the lower back release you can close the eyes notice the chin is slightly dropped into the chest just long through the back of the neck so you can either extend the arms straight out to the side or even cross the arms, give yourself a hug here. And then as you're ready, unwind and release the legs down into Shavasana. So the ankles fall open. Eyes are closed. If you have anything to cover your eyes, please do. This helps the optical nerve release so it's not processing any light. While you're here in Shavasana, notice if there's anywhere else that you can soften, anywhere else that you can release. Just give yourself to the earth. The bones become heavy, really dropping in. Let the breath go completely. That everything is soft. It's open to receive the gifts of your practice. So much of our lives is really living the questions, living in the gray area. How much tension can we handle? We learn to increase our tolerance for discomfort and the natural tension of this polar opposites pulling us in one direction and then another. So we really loosen our obsession and our tendency to seek answers and resolution and even understanding as yogis, we really soften into what is. And it is so challenging and it is such an incredible mystery, this life. And so these practices help align us with the elemental forces so we feel that greater support in that natural reality of life. It's just the inevitable reality. There's nothing wrong with your life. It just is the way that it is. This is the game, the nature of the game. Softening here. And gently roll yourself over onto one side. Keep the eyes closed, bring yourself up to a seated position. Take one minute of silence, hands on the knees or the thighs. Palms can face upwards or downwards. Shoulders relax, chin parallel to the earth. 
And just resting right in the center point, resting right in the throne, in your own nobility. Right at that pinnacle of equinox, it's the threshold, this tipping point. There's a moment of great shanti, of shanti bhavana, of great peace, when we're holding both the solar and the lunar, the hatha. Moving the hands together at the heart. Again, take lotus mudra, padma mudra, heels of the hands, pinky finger and thumb together. Just open to receive. You can feel that chalice being filled in the open chamber of the heart, the innermost temple of the heart, hridaya, just being filled with unconditional love and support from beyond the beyond, from inside. And fingertips together, prayer position. One more time, visualize, feel into your own prayer, your own sankalpa for this next phase of life. And so much gratitude. Gratitude for yourself for showing up, gratitude for this practice, this offering. And one sound of om, inhaling. Gently blink your eyes open. Namaste. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy autumnal equinox, happy fall equinox, and hope you enjoyed this yoga ritual flow. Please reach out to us on our Facebook page and have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful fall season and holiday season. Namaste.